Hello everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the new AI upscaling functionality that got introduced in Corona 12 Update 1. This new functionality is designed to speed up the rendering of your preview imagery, be it still images or draft animations, and it also works with interactive rendering. What this thing does is it renders your images at the quarter of the specified resolution that you've set in your render settings. So in our case here, it renders it in 1280 by 720 instead of 2560 by 1440. And then it AI upscales it to the set resolution. And at the same time, it also AI denoises it. All of this work is done using the optics framework, which does mean you'll need an NVIDIA graphics card to leverage this functionality. Now, the benefits are hopefully clear enough, right? This makes rendering your preview imagery and animation drafts faster because the image is effectively rendered in one quarter of the wanted resolution, but because of the AI upscaling, it'll better retain the details when it gets scaled back up to the full resolution, as opposed to, you know, if you just rendered the image out at a quarter of the resolution without AI upscaling. In our case here, as you can see, we went from a six minute render, which is the one without AI upscaling and is rendered in full resolution. We went from that to a two minute render. And so if you're rendering animation previews, especially, right? Well, then this means you've considerably lowered your total render times. And, and you've helped save the planet a little bit because you've burned less energy to do so. At this point, a little bit of a quick note, if you're trying to compare renders that were AI upscaled um, and you're trying to compare them to renders that were rendered at full resolution, uh, do not compare them based on the noise limit that each render tried to hit. Because when you change the resolution, the noise limit percentage will also get affected. So ideally when you're comparing images that were AI upscaled and you're comparing them to full resolution images and you're trying to compare the render times there, uh, you want to make sure that both of the images were rendered to a set amount of passes and not to the noise limit. And to expand on that, our recommendation in general would be to try and always use the pass limit for whenever you're working with the AI upscaler, because the amount of detected noise in your image might be very different when you're rendering at different resolutions. And so the pass limit might be a much better parameter to define when the rendering is done whenever you're using AI upscaling. Now, upon a closer look, you'll definitely see that the AI upscaled image is not quite as crisp or quite as detailed as the full resolution image, right? Plus, you might see some flickering due to the AI denoiser not having temporal consistency. Nonetheless, for rendering out previews, this can be a very useful tool. And so for the reasons that we just mentioned, uh, the AI upscaling functionality is designed for preview imagery and not so much the final renders. Then again, if you're happy with the quality that you're getting, why not use it for final imagery as well? Okay then, but how do you get the AI upscaler to work? Well, it's rather easy. Just jump into your render settings and then under general settings, all the way down here, you're going to be able to find that you now have this upscaling mode selector. In here, you can select whether you want the AI upscaler to be disabled, which is kind of self-explanatory, right? Or you can set it to only turn itself on whenever you're rendering out animations, which is pretty cool. Or you can also just simply set it to be always on, which is the setting you'll want if you're trying to AI upscale your still images. Now that really is all that there is to it. The rest is done automatically. And as soon as you start your render, uh, you're going to be able to see the AI upscaled result in your VFB. Just remember one thing that along with AI upscaling, you'll also automatically have AI denoising as part of it because that is just how the AI upscaler work. And that is also why the denoising options here are going to become great out for you. Okay, cool. But now you can also enable the AI upscaling to work with interactive rendering as well. And that makes for a really fun experience, especially when you're trying to, uh, you know, work on the broader strokes in your scene. So whenever you set up, you're setting up your compositions, whenever you're setting up the lighting and all those sort of parts of the workflow where you don't really require seeing all the nitty gritty details in your materials, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because again, upscaling still comes with a loss of quality, but 
On the flip side, you know, when you're working on those broader strokes, the AI upscaling can speed up the workflow because, you know, just rendering at a quarter resolution will be much faster, right? And you're going to be able to see how your scene looks like in broader strokes faster, right? Now, to get the AI upscaler working for the interactive render, this upscaling mode selector here is really not going to make a difference for you because this only affects the renders that happen whenever you click the render button, okay? So to get the AI upscaler to work with the interactive render, you need to go under the performance settings here, and then you need to locate the use upscaling toggle. You toggle this thing to on, and then you start the interactive render, and voila, you have AI upscaling in your interactive rendering now. Okay. And so, you know, this makes working on the broader uh, strokes in your scene, whenever you're not overly concerned with uh, details and such, it makes working in your scene uh, and adjusting those broader strokes a lot more pleasant because, you know, those passes come in at a much faster rate because the image is being rendered at a quarter resolution and then upscaled with the AI upscaler, right? Now, one thing to note for when it comes to using the AI upscaler with interactive rendering is that this the AI upscaler won't really improve the time Corona needs to load up the scene or load up the changes that you're making in your scene. So the parsing times don't really get affected because they aren't resolution dependent, right? And so that is just something to keep in mind because that part of the interactive rendering experience won't feel snappier. But again, the actual rendering process will be much faster because you're rendering at a quarter of the resolution. In front of you, it's just a quick example of how the interactive renderer behaves with AI upscaling turned on compared to AI upscaling turned off. In general, I personally find it to be really useful, again, for those broad stroke moves in your scenes. Um, getting passes in quicker, you know, really helps with uh, the speed at which you can kind of assess uh, how the scene as a whole looks like. Right. And so with that, we are concluding this tutorial. Uh, we hope you've learned something new. We hope you like this new functionality. And, you know, we've got more uh, tutorials planned for you. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.